guys welcome back to this playlist where i show you how to build a SaaS product using cloudflare workers and in this video specifically we'll be setting up the bindings required to get this application going and also we'll set up the scaffolding for the durable object which is like the brains of this application so this is going to be really interesting let's switch over to my screen and let's get started okay so heading back to the project we left off at a pretty good state from the previous video so we had the workflow created and again a refresher on workflows is that it's a durable execution engine so i'm just going to uh, show you quickly what's on developers.cloudflare.com and if you go search for workflows and you go to the overview page you can see briefly what it is it's a durable execution engine built on workers it allows you to build multi-step applications that can automatically retry persist state and run for minutes hours days or weeks so it's a beautiful product and it's awesome we're using it to ensure that each step of this application is durable and that it retries automatically if anything goes wrong so heading back to the project what we're going to do in this video is set up the bindings so we're going to need to set up a couple of bindings and also the uh, browser and also the durable object that controls the browser so let's get started the first thing i'm going to do here is create a kv cache to cache the articles that are rendered so let's uh, go open up the terminal i'm going to quit this uh, workload that was running and we can clear the screen all right and what i'm going to do here is i am going to create a bunch of kv namespaces so let's make this big and i am going to paste in this command to create a kv namespace called article cache so that's mpx wrangler kv namespace create and the name of the kv namespace which in this case is article cache and this is going to create um, a kv namespace for us so i'm going to select my account all right and that has created the kv namespace so i'll go copy this binding over so let's go copy this binding and what i'm going to do is open up my uh, wrangler.json file and we can paste it right here so let's paste that in and we can add a comma and that looks good all right the next thing i'm going to do is create a preview uh, kv cache and that's because we want a staging cache uh, for development so i'm just going to paste in the command again it's exactly what you saw in the last command but here we're adding a preview flag because it's going to be for staging or for development process so let's hit that and that's going to create a kv preview all right the only thing i'm going to have to do here is just cop copy the line where it uh, outputs the preview id and we can head back here and I add a comma and we paste this in and we're good to go so we have the kv namespace created and that's awesome the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to set up the bindings for the other things we need to get this application going um, we'll need a couple of bindings the first is the binding to connect my application to the browser rendering api and for that it's actually quite straightforward so let's uh, uh, go back here and i'm just going to scroll down and i'll add the binding to connect to the browser rendering api so that's going to be the browser binding uh, the key is called browser and the actual binding to interact with this resource from your environment in my case it's called browser you can call this whatever you want but for me it's browser in all caps then the last thing i'm going to do here is i want this application to also have a durable object and for that i'll need to set up a durable object binding so let's add a comma there and paste in the configuration to connect my application to a durable object so i have a migration for my durable object class and if you take a look at the actual durable object binding which starts from here um, i have the name uh, my binding name set to browser controller in all caps this is going to be what i'll use to access this resource from the environment and then i also have to tell it the name of my durable object class we haven't created this class yet but i'm going to call this the browser controller caps in camel case um, we're going to create this class shortly but this is the name i have configured for the class and of course you want to set up your migrations and that's virtually all you need to do to get going now the next thing i'll do is let's open up my 
package.json file. And what I want to do is make a few changes to the dev script and also to the start script. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm adding the remote flag because we're using the browser rendering API. The browser rendering API needs to connect to the remote Cloudflare resource. So that's why we have to add the remote flag to get this going. And with that, we are good to go. And I can go back to the terminal. Let's clear the screen. And because we've added a bunch of resources, what I want to do at this point is regenerate the uh, TypeScript types. So this is going to be npm run cf type gen. And that's all good to go. You can see we have the browser resource added. We have the KV call article cache added. And we also have the durable object called browser controller added. And that's awesome. So now we can actually start building the logic to get the article rendered and cached. And to get started with that, we need to install a couple of libraries. The first we'll be doing is installing the Cloudflare Puppeteer library, which is used by the browser rendering API to control the remote browser on Cloudflare. If you don't know what the browser rendering API is, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times now. You can go to the docs and search for the browser rendering API, and it tells you what it is. Essentially, it's a Chrome browser living somewhere in the cloud on Cloudflare's network that you can connect to that spin up a brand new browser, um, open up tabs, and automate a browser using Puppeteer. If you've used Puppeteer before, this is the exact same thing, but it's running remotely in the Cloudflare network, and you don't have to worry about like hosting servers, um, installing Puppeteer on them. You can easily just remotely connect to an available server, launch a browser, and get stuff going using the browser rendering API, and it's really awesome. All right, so heading back to the project, uh, let's install a couple of libraries. So we're going to install the Cloudflare Puppeteer library. So I'm going to run npm install at Cloudflare forward slash Puppeteer and pass the save their flag. And that should get that library installed. Then the next thing I'm going to install is the Puppeteer CMP clicker. And the reason why I'm installing this library is because most articles on the web or most websites use cookies and as a result they have to have a cookie banner on the website what this library does is it automatically dismisses the cookie banner so that when the article gets rendered and sent to our kindle we don't have the red cookie banner showing up on the article that has been rendered to the kindle device so that's uh, really important then the last thing we need to do when it comes to the cookie banner library is add some TypeScript def for it because it's not a TypeScript library, it's built with JavaScript. So we don't have TypeScript errors. I'm just going to go here and create a definition file. So let's have a types. And that's all we need to do to get that done. And with that, we are good to go. So I'm going to head back here and let's uh, go create our durable object. And to get a durable object created is actually quite uh, quite easy. So let's create a file called browser.ts. And this is where our durable object will live. If you haven't used durable objects before, I highly recommend that you take a look at the documentation for it. It's called durable durable object and this uh, documentation explains what they are but essentially a durable object allows you to have or build stateful apps while using serverless tech and the reason we're using a durable object for this specific application if you go look at the architectural diagram we want to have a durable object to be an entry point or a router where all rendering requests are forwarded to. So all requests to render an article is going to be forwarded to the exact same durable object instance. And that durable object instance holds a live connection to the browser rendering API. So this allows us to build the application in a more efficient way. Instead of spinning up a new browser every time a request comes in, we're going to have a durable object that lives for a long time and maintains a direct connection to 
a live browser and each time a request comes it's just going to be routed to that long lived durable object so we have it as a router sitting in front of a browser that is going to be kept alive for as long as possible and each time a request comes in if we have a hundred million requests it's all going to hit the same durable object and we're not going to be spinning up a hundred million browsers i hope that makes sense and we'll talk more about the details as we go on to write the code and uh, we'll look at ways to optimize our SaaS product so let's go back to the code here and to get this durable object going i'll need to import a couple of things the first thing i'm going to do is um, import the libraries we just installed. So let's import Puppeteer from Cloudflare Puppeteer, which is the library we just installed. So we're also going to import the click CMP from the uh, Puppeteer CMP clicker library. And lastly, we want to import the durable objects base class. from Cloudflare workers. All right, so that looks good. And the next thing we want to do here is like basically define what our durable object is. But most of this is boilerplate code. We're not going to be implementing it in this video. So I'm just going to copy paste the base class and that should give you an idea of what you need here. So we're going to be exporting the class. The class again is called browser controller. And if you remember in our wrangler.json file, that's the name of the class name supplied here, browser controller. So you want to ensure that those match up. So let's uh, delete, close this file. Um, and then he extends the base durable object class because it's extending the base durable object class you want to have a constructor that calls the super method and passes the context and the environment to the base durable object class and of course this class has some states so it's going to have a browser state a storage state and the environment state and this is where we assign all of those states that the uh, durable object needs to get going and down here, we have a method called render and cache. The method doesn't have an implementation right now, but it takes a URL, goes to connect to a browser rendering instance, opens up a new page, renders that page, caches it in KV and returns. And lastly, we have an alarm here, which ensures that this durable object lives for as long as possible so we can listening to as much request within the time frame this durable object is going to be alive and render it using the same connection or a single connection to a browser rendering instance so all of this looks good and that's the durable object for now so what i'm going to do is that i'll need to go to the index.ts file and we'll need to re-export the browser controller class we uh, created which is the durable object so we want to export browser controller from uh, the browser.ts file, which is just browser, and that's good to go. And we can head back to our workflow file. And here where we don't have an implementation for the workflow, we can actually start implementing the process of ranging a file if it's not already cached. And that's actually quite straightforward. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a way to connect to the same durable object for every request and get that durable object to process the rendering of the file. And to do that, we want to generate an ID, which is going to be the same for every request and use that ID to connect to a durable object instance. So let's do that, const ID equals to this.env.browserController, which is how we access our durable object resource. And we want to generate an ID from a string or id from name we're going to call this identifier rendering browser all right that looks good and then we can use this id to fetch the live durable object so const we can call this object for live durable object so this is going to be this the env dot browser controller dot get and we're going to fetch that durable object giving the ID called rendering browser. And now that we have access to this durable object, we can just run the 
render and cache method. But before we go on to run this method, we need to regenerate the types so we don't have TypeScript errors and we also have nice autocomplete uh, here. So I'm just going to save this as is. Let's head back to the terminal. I can clear this and we can run CF type gen. And if you take a look at this, you notice here that we now have the browser controller added. And this is currently pointing to the browser controller class that we have defined. So uh, that's all good. So now we can head back here and we can use this durable object. So we can await obj dot um, render and cache. And we want to pass in the URL and uh, that's all good. So we can save that. That looks good. Um, it seems we have an error because I was too eager typing. So let's uh, go back here and this should be a wait. All right, so that's, that's better now. We don't have any errors and this looks good. So now we can go to the terminal and now we want to deploy the application. The reason we're deploying the application is because this application depends on a workflow and a browser rendering API, which runs remotely. The remote browser rendering API needs to connect to the remote workflow to get things working. So we need to get this application deployed. So we have the workflow deployed. And when we run this application in remote mode, it's connecting to the remote workflow endpoints. I hope that makes sense. So let's run npm run dev and, okay, that's not going to work. So let's uh, quit this. We should be deploying first. So let's clear the screen and let's run npm run deploy. And this is going to get the workflow deployed. And I'm going to say yes. All right, we have that deployed and we can run the dev script, npm run dev. And that's going to start a local server that uses the remote browser rendering API that then connects to the remote workflow. Um, I hope that makes sense. So now let's uh, let's test this to see if all of this works. I am going to head back to my API testing tool. So I'm going to hit the send button. And if everything works, uh, you notice that this gives us an ID and this tells us that the workflow is queued which means the workflow was triggered and it's queued. And if we go to take a look at what I have on my dashboard, so this is dash.cloudflare.com and let's select my account, scroll down to workers and this is workflows. You notice we have two workflows now. So we have a web to Kindle starter workflow and this has a workflow that was triggered a few seconds ago, which was the request we made. And if we take a look at this workflow, um, you can see that the workflow has three steps that we defined. It has a step to check for article in cache. Uh, this completed and returned false because going back to the source code here, so let's go back here. Okay, we're already in the workflow.ts file. Going back here, uh, we set this st static return to always return false. So this completed and returned false. Then we have the step to render and cache an article. This doesn't have any return, but it, it ran successfully because of the methods were empty. And lastly, we have a step to send an article to a user, which again was is an empty function. So this really did not return anything, but the workflow is working, which is really important. And it is connecting to a durable object. Let's head back to the diagram. And it's the workflow is working and it's connecting to a durable object, which we will set up to render an article using the browser rendering API. But everything we need to get going is already uh, done. So in the next video, what we're going to do is really go in to implement the logic of the durable object or the browser controller class, such that it's able to take a URL, connect to a browser rendering instance and maintain that live connection, open up a page, get the article rendered, get it cached and exit gracefully. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.